Hello and welcome to the show. Porsche has arrived in Forza Horizon 3, so naturally we are going to be turning a 911 into a hill climb monster. I think these have potential. I think this uh, this Carrera has potential to go pretty damn quickly up the uh, up the hill climb course. Should be interesting to have a rear engine car go up here. Now it does start off in C-Class, but it's not going to stay there particularly long. We of course need to convert the car to all-wheel drive. We will also need to put on some snow tyres. It'll probably jump the PI all the way up into mid-A-Class. Bloody hell. Um, yeah, relatively light, this vehicle. We're probably not going to see crazy levels of power out of the car. Uh, not particularly large tyres at the front either, only 225s for the front tyres, 275s at the rear. We shouldn't be having too much in the way of oversteer issues, which is always nice. Would like bigger tyres, but that's what we have been, uh, been given to work with on this car. Now, there are some rally parts for this car. Unfortunately, as much as I would like to run the rally parts, I need downforce. I need the extra grip, so we are, of course, going to be running the uh, front kind of snowplow almost going on there. Actually, very uh, interesting way of mounting it. And as far as a rear wing goes, well, yeah. <laughs> it gives us downforce. We need it. There is also options as far as rear bumper goes. Again, you can kind of have rally configuration. It's not really much point. It's apparently it raises it by one PI despite making it a couple of pounds heavier. I guess, uh, I don't know, slightly less drag? I don't know why there would be. Either way, yeah, there's that. And then we can also have mud flaps on the side of the car, which also apparently improves drag, which I don't quite get. They are the tidiest mud flaps, but either way. Um, yeah, not going to bother with them. We are going to, of course, go for some nice race brakes. Very important, along with some off-road suspension. At race anti-roll bars. We'll have the roll cage as well. Weight reduction is... A good question. In fact, there's only one stage of weight reduction anyway, so we will go for that. Uh, two and a half thousand pounds at the moment is not the lightest. Not the lightest uh, car, not by a long way. It could be a little bit lighter. I would like it to be a bit lighter, but I'm not sure we're going to uh, to get that. Now, if I can keep the standard engine in this car, then we will do. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how much power we're going to get out of this. Admittedly, the camshafts will give us a nice big boost. I say a nice big boost, only 52 horsepower. Not amazing. Let's go grab a turbo I think we can put on this. Uh, we can indeed. We can put two. We can put some nice twin turbos on our engine. I'm not sure, though, that this is going to be quite enough. Uh, it's going to be really pushing it, if it is. 405 horsepower at the moment. I mean, power-to-weight ratio-wise isn't too shabby in this vehicle. I think we're going to kind of run out of PI here at about 500 horsepower. So, yeah, not quite. It's not quite going to work. It's close. Well, we will have to go for an engine swap. And there is a new engine to play around with. 4 litre flat 6. I believe this is the GT3, the, the, the latest GT3 RS's engine. I don't know if this goes into any other cars aside from Porsches. It would be quite nice to see it as an option, potentially, in uh, other vehicles as well. It, it may well do. But, uh, yeah, we've got another flat six engine to play around with, which is always nice. Now, we start off, you know, with a, a fair amount more power than the one that we just left. We might not need to uh, bother going turbo. What we might try and do is take away a slightly heavier engine than the one... I say slightly heavier than the one we were working with, but it is also minus some turbos. Uh, we are up to 600 horsepower in our Porsche, which is not too shabby at all. We have 600 horsepower at this relatively, l relatively lightweight. Uh, it's not too bad. I can't get, annoyingly, we're at that stage where everything adds up the extra couple of PI. Okay, we have to go flywheel. Then we will have to go for driveline. That'll save us a little bit of weight, and then gearbox, and then clutch. We'll probably all get on. Uh, yep, indeed it will. Okay. Interesting prospect. Decent amount of power, decent sized tyres, weight distribution could help, having a lot of the weight over the rear, or it could make it quite difficult to drive. We could suffer from even even more understeer, of course, with so much weight over the rear. Yeah, an, in an interesting one, certainly. I, I do think we could perhaps see a car challenging that top 10, although the top 10 is getting tougher and tougher to uh, work your way into. 
So, of course, we have brought the Porsche to the Devil's Corners Hill Climb, where it is going to get three attempts. Now, if it does want to make it into the top ten, it has got to try and beat the Donkavorter. 157.4 is the required time for the top ten now. Our leader is still the BMW 507, a 55.9. Now, I think the Porsche would struggle to get near the BMW. The BMW had more power fair bit more power and was lighter however if this thing does handle well we might be doing pretty uh we might be able to get some, some pretty decent amount of speed with the engine at the back we will probably have very very good traction out of the corners the issue is with that weight distribution understeer and with small front tires understeer and driving on snow understeer and all-wheel driver the understeer is kind of a uh, <laughs> A concern with the 9 and We certainly do get out of these corners very, very nicely indeed. And that is helpful, especially in this opening section where there's a lot of hairpins and so on. I fear that we're probably not going to be able to ultimately, like there, we're just, the, the, the front end does not want to do what I want it to do. We're probably ultimately going to struggle with uh, with all of that. Uh, so we're going to see how quickly we go to straight line. Uh, not amazing. I was a little bit early on the brakes, perhaps, with the car. Now, generally fast vehicles have been doing around 120 plus miles an hour. It's 111 across that jump. We're a little bit slow at 103. Not the worst, though, that we have seen. It is so good at getting the power down out of these corners. It is a shame that uh, we can't get the front end to turn in to these. We should be pretty good up this hill as well, but... Um, I don't think we want first gear. Oh, we go a little bit wide. I was trying to carry speed in a place I, well, probably shouldn't really have been trying. Uh, we're going to have a little bit of a slide through there. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a great first run here as we bounce our way down the icy straight, get turned in. Not as nice as the Raptor through there. <laughs> I'm sorry. As beautiful as a classic 911 is, it's nowhere near as good as the Raptor coming off of that uh, icy straight. All the likes of the Alfa Romeo and quite a few of the vehicles. It's all out of shape around the final corner. There was not enough turning there whatsoever for the amount of speed I was trying to take. We got under two minutes. Uh, it, yeah, I think the top ten might be a little bit uh, ambitious. A low 58 might be possible if we really, really get things sorted out, though. Well, very much as feared or with our Porsche understeer is the the crippling problem in many ways yeah we're not the fastest accelerating car still 118 miles an hour down towards turn one here and yeah we have got good traction I it just doesn't get turned into the corner it just doesn't want to and that is going to cost time over the course of this run we're going to kind of have to a little bit drive it like a point and squirt muscle car. We're going to kind of just have to line it up for the exit of these corners and just be patient, I think, is the only way we're going to get any sort of speed out of the car. To be fair, I don't have much luck with building these uh, these 911s. I think one of the worst C-Class cars I've ever built was one of these. I just couldn't get the damn thing to drive in, in any form of competitiveness whatsoever. It's just the way it goes sometimes uh, this one is I, I mean, it, it, it's built as best as it can be for this sort of terrain there is not much more really that, uh, that you can do with it I think power to weight ratio wise yeah it's not it's not the most amazing uh, but that's not the biggest problem with this car it's the acceleration is is workable you know we've had cars that haven't been massively fast accelerating go quickly up here because they have the grip they can throw the cars through the corners you can maintain corner speed and this is not as bad as it could be but it's just not it's not great this front is better from the Porsche. I am much happier with this, although we're going to bounce across a little bit there onto the ice. We got away with it, though, thankfully. Come on! Don't, don't, don't understeer. I need more speed around there. It's only 98 as we leave the jump. We've been saying speeds in excess of 100. I think about 104 is the fastest. We have got across that jump, crippling understeer through that penultimate corner. We do line it up better, though, for the final turn. It is a low 58. 58.1, I think, on that attempt. We are getting... Oh, 58.2, sorry. We're getting closer to that uh, top 10. 
Oh, I'm not sure though. I'm not sure that we can find eight tenths of a second on our final run. So, where can we make up some stage speed? I am not massively sure. That last run did feel pretty good. Of course, we have found plenty of time in previous uh, sort of third attempts with cars. I think it's all going to be about about patience. It's not going to look dramatic. I think there's uh, oh, one of the things with this car. If it's going quickly, it will not look particularly dramatic at all. And to be fair, a lot of times, the, the, le the less dramatic the car looks, the faster it is actually going up this course. But because we've got such big issues we understand we really do seem very very slow at mid corner we've got to try and make up all of that speed by straightening up the exit as much as we can play to the car's strengths where we can around this uh, course see i can't chuck it i don't have the confidence to throw it into this corner with as much speed as we have been doing you could just you could see visibly how much the car is struggling i've thrown cars into there almost flat out in the past and this one i can't do it now it will get out the other side very very well but it's yeah the time we lose on the way in we can only make up a little bit of it in terms of, of acceleration and traction 105 miles an hour though across that jump there considering the uh, amount of power we are down is not too bad a going or oh, some oversteer there that i could have done without as we now head up towards the hairpin here come on get turn get turn get turn get turn use all of that glorious flat six power as we of our way up the hill not running so wide this time around actually use kind of use the bumps there a little bit to get the tidiest oversteer just so that we can get the front end of the car around that corner as we now head down the icy straight again i'm trying to get the car straightened up as best i can for the exit much better off the icy straight that time around a little bit like the pontiac gto we see a tad bit of a wheelie from the Porsche. Not as spectacular though. So much time I think is lost around those final couple of corners. Oh, oh, we're close. I don't know if we beat the Donkervort there. It is going... Oh. <laughs> we have a tie. Only our second tie in the uh, Hill Climb Monsters series. However, we have set an identical time to the Donkervort. 157.484 it's exactly the same time as the uh, as the track car. Tell you what, when I figured out how I could get some speed out of this Porsche, it wasn't half bad. You've got to take slightly different lines. It's it's quite a different, almost driving style in some ways. But to get the car into well into a joint tenth place, I think is pretty damn good going for this 911. It beats the uh, the Commodore, it beats the Land Rover Series 3, the Jaguar F-Type BMW 2002 Turbo. And you know, we're only a tenth or so down on the Lamborghini Countach, a couple of tenths down on the Lancia Stratos, the Ford Raptor race truck. That is not bad going for a car that you really struggle to get the front end turned in. If you do take slightly different lines, you drive it in a slightly different way, you can be finding some speed. It's all about getting it out of the corner fast. You're going to be slow on the way in. Whatever you do, it's just going to happen. If you can focus on getting it out of the turns quickly, it has the traction. Where, yeah, where, where that engine placement, that weight distribution doesn't help it in some aspects. It, it kind of balances itself out in, in others. I'm surprised I got it that fast. I wasn't expecting to get it into a 57.4. And it really does feel bad through those final two corners. I feel like I'm losing a lot of time through there. Uh, and if it could get turned in, I, I don't know just how much faster it could potentially go. But uh, there we have it. The first Porsche on the course. And it would just about sneak its way <laughs> in to uh, that uh, that top 10. Yeah, surpri surprising, surprising speed on that final run. That, though, is going to be it from me. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, uh, goodbye.